So we know now that there's so much more to the verse, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength from Philippians 4.13. What we need to know now, though, is where does our strength come from? In our next part of this series, Cowboy Strong, we're going to look at three different places that God gives us strength. The first is from him directly, that God is who gives us our strength. Psalm 29.11 says this, The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. We already understand now that being meek isn't the same as being weak, that it's having strength but keeping it under control. So in this verse from Psalms, we see that we not only get strength from God, but he gives us peace. And when we're at peace, that's something that helps us to stay under control. That helps us to use our strength correctly. And then we also already know that from Philippians 4.13, our strength comes from Jesus Christ. 1 Chronicles 16.11 says, Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. This is from David's song of thanks. And again, it's a reminder then that our strength comes from God. But we also need to consider in looking at these verses that our attention needs to be on him. If we're to get his strength, we need to be focused on him as well. The next place that we can see where we get our strength from is God's word itself. Psalm 119.28 says this, My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Then 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says this, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So those are just two verses that show us the importance of getting God's strength through reading his word, taking the time to understand what's in his Bible. And our time spent there, we can find things that then encourage us, motivate us, and strengthen us. But what we're also reminded in those two verses is that we're going to be doing things that glorify and honor God. In in 2 Timothy, we're seeing the importance of being equipped for every good work. Those are the things that God would have us to do. And if we're going to be strengthened according to God's word from that Psalm 119, 28, then we're also going to be doing things that are according to the Bible. Those are the ways that we're going to be applying our strength. The third place that we get our strength from is from other Christians, from other believers. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says this, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And in this verse, Paul is encouraging the church that he's writing to and affirming that they are already doing some of these things and wants to see them continuing to build each other up, lift each other up, saying good things, as other verses tells us to do, to speak in kindness and encouragement. And then Romans 15, 5 tells us this, May God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one voice and one mind you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, we're seeing that our strength comes from God, but we're also being reminded that when we keep a Christ-like attitude, we treat each other that way. And so when we see somebody else that is struggling, By encouraging them, by lifting them up, by speaking kindness, by giving them advice, by helping them, we then also are giving them strength. So when somebody does that for us, then we are being strengthened by that person. That's one reason that it's important for us to surround ourselves with other Christians, especially some that are more mature than us, that have more experience, more knowledge from studying their own Bibles, from their own time in church, that we can be surrounded by those people then that can help keep us strong, that can help us keep on track. And we in turn can start to do it for others.